Yes, everybody, we are still giving away 500 XRP if this video can get 2,000 likes within 24 hours. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is make sure you press the like button, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on, and make sure you put something in the comment section down below, and just put down there what the first crypto was that you ever bought, or your favorite crypto right now, because your comment is going to be your entry ticket. So guys, I've very often told you about the fact that I think political statements and really grand political movements will have a lot of effect on the XRP price, right? It's going to have a lot of effect on the way we, you know, see everything, mostly just the economy, and that will reflect in a couple of big changes in the banking system, most likely, which will ultimately also change the XRP and Ripple price. So here is just something that came out and it's, it's going pretty trendy, pretty popular. Bernie Sanders. Today, Trump announced that if he is reelected, he will permanently defund Social Security. That may make sense to the billionaires at his country club, but it makes zero sense to me. No, Mr. President, we will not let you destroy Social Security. We will defeat you badly. Now, guys, I don't know if this is the truth. Maybe this is just fake false info. Haven't really looked into that part. But the fact here is that there's just a very, very big discussion going on in the US right now. And they're all using the same stuff against each other. What I'm trying to say with that is, you know, I could see a lot of really, really positive things with Trump becoming president again for our cryptos holdings. And I could see a lot of positive things coming out of crypto holdings if Trump were to not be reelected. Now, even though I don't really mind too much whoever becomes president, because again, I don't live in the US. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't affect me as much as a lot of you guys. There still are quite a lot of factors that I take into account. And, and one of those is with interest rates, everything having to do with it. The second is all the relief bills or the, 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 the what's it called now? The stimulus packages and all of that, whatever the, the decision is going to be next time. The third one is, okay, let's say there are stimulus packages and it's already decided by the, the rest of the folk. Then exactly how are they going to be spread apart? I think Bernie would have a very different approach than what Trump would like. Again, I'm not saying he has all the influence into it. I'm just saying that, you know, there's a certain picture that they give off, you know, and that will, of course, also stabilize or destabilize the, the general people or the, the populace or how do we say it? the population, the people in the country, because whatever they say, you know, they, they take it very, very harshly. And by the way, sometimes I, I like to do some stuff like, for example, Bernie here, you got to check a couple of videos like does he have an iPhone because it's Twitter for iPhone or is it just some, you know, messenger doing it for him or somebody else, you know, because most of the time these guys don't really go on Twitter themselves, right? Because that would be kind of strange, but it's just some spokesperson doing it for them. However, the point that I'm trying to make is still clear that a lot of their influences could have a lot of effect on crypto, mostly because of what will happen to the banking sector and how people will have their faith in the US for the next couple of years. You know, it could also be that people lose their faith in the dollar. Uh, but that again goes tie and tie with losing faith in the US. But again, leave your comment about that down below because it's a pretty good theory. I'm not trying to dive too deep because I think I don't want to, you know, offend too many people by saying something about different presidents. Also, you know, I don't want to get banned from the US for, uh, you know, <laughs> scolding their president. <laughs> no, it's just a joke. But yeah, I, I want to keep it kind of neutral here. Just saying that both of them could have some different effects. All right, then, Ripple XRP providing tangible services like cross-border payments will have legs for survival. It's something I've also mentioned pretty often, and that is that really, out of all these things we often talk about, cross-border remittances and really all the services that Ripple is providing, will really be able to work in any time, day, age, whatever you want to call it right there. It will always work because it's always necessary. There will always be people who want to send money home. There will always be the transfer of value. And if there's one central currency, then most likely XP will be involved with that too. But the central currency theory, yeah, I'm not seeing that too close by just because it's such a vague thing and you really need a lot of cooperation around the whole world, which is Honestly speaking, pretty difficult to do, so I'm not too keen on, um, you know, believing that one. However, even if it were to happen, XRP would be connected to it. Maybe it would even be the one currency. Uh, but as of this point, even if all countries go to CBDCs, we know they've all been talking about Ripple's technology. We know that there's a good chance that somewhere in the pipeline, they're going to be using Ripple for the fundamentals, you know, really, really down at the bottom. And thus, in the end, I'm also not too worried about Ripple getting, you know, uh, not used enough because... At least in my opinion, they're going to be getting everywhere piece by piece. 
why XRP's waning momentum may be the calm before the storm surge. Now, it's to me, again, pretty obvious that we're just right now in the calm before the storm, right? We're actually at the edge of a pretty big old run. And right now, it's just going to be going up and down and up and down for a little ways as people are trying to find their footing. And at this point, I'm actually trying to trying to see exactly what's happening in Bitcoin dominance as well, because I would have expected it to go up right now in the last couple of days, especially today, that a lot of these also have been going down a little bit. And, uh, and, and Bitcoin has, again, still been above 11.5. But I think Chainlink is actually taking a pretty big toll in all of this, going up another 20% today to about $13, and taking away quite a lot of domin domination from Bitcoin. Quite a lot of dominance from Bitcoin by just gaining as much and just adding a ton of market cap over the last month or so. I mean, it's gone up 120%. That's $2 billion that... Uh, that the Chainlink just brought in and ate up. That's a lot of money, you know. In a 200 and no 350 billion dollar market cap, two is quite a lot for just one coin to take up. And VeChain also doing a little bit of the same, going up 10 percent over the last day, 12 percent even. And um, actually, on the week of the month, it's not doing that spectacularly. But over a long period of time here, it is looking insane, going from 0 0.004 to about. How much are we at right now? Let's see at the top here. 0 0.02. Oh, my days, guys. That is from the beginning of May. 0 0.004. Yeah, that's really the beginning of May. That's so insane to think about. That is so insane, right? Going from 4 to 20. Wow. That is huge in just two months. That's a huge investment right there, guys. Again, really, really amazing. But yeah, the, the calm before the storm, the reason I'm saying that is because right now, we're in a period where people don't really know exactly what they want to get into. And very often I get the question like, is right now a good time to buy crypto? Is right now a good time to buy myself more XRP? And uh, how much more should I have and all of that? Guys, all the time is a good time to buy because we're still so early. This is still just the start. We're still in the beginning phase. And there's literally all that you can pick up is most likely going to be a good decision. All right, most, most, most likely. And now, by the way, you might be wondering, what's this sound that's coming up here? It's most likely my laptop, again, taking a toll. I just bought it two years ago, $2,000 MacBook, but I don't know. It's, it's not the best thing. It's not ventilated properly, I think, because I hate MacBooks nowadays. But yeah, it's also like 34 degrees outside Celsius, so it's pretty damn hot. Maybe the MacBook is, you know, not liking that either. Could be. Moving forward, Unstable Coin said, utility wins in the end. Adoption. One of the XRP community principles I can agree with. And that is a reply to Alex Saunders who said, This month I was able to hedge my portfolio with decentralized options straight from the custody of my hardware wallet while also earning a nice yield while being my own bank. I can also rotate in and out of gold and silver Ethereum tokens on the weekends. None of that is possible without Ethereum. But again, that's not completely the truth, and that's really not how it all works. There's so much more good parts to XRP that a lot of people are not expressing. And I think it's mostly the, the Bitcoin maximalist and sometimes also the Ethereum maximalist who really want to kind of ignore all the possibilities that you have with XRP and the, the nice parts that come with it. They, they're like, you know what? Yeah, you have all the cross mints. You have a good company you're working with. But you know what? I'm going to press ignore because uh, I don't like it. I don't care. <laughs> it's what we see very, very often from these Ethereum guys. They're like, Ethereum is the best because you can do this and this and this. And when you say, uh, but you can also do that on XRP, they're like, no, yeah, but I mean, yeah, but, but, but Ethereum also. And that's really the end of the discussion all the time. So... I've kind of strayed away from that as well. It's not useful having discussions with Ethereum maximalists either. They're always saying that their platform is the best, yada, yada, yada. And by the way, guys, I'm not against holding Ethereum, all right? Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm against being a really one coin only fan because I'm not 100% an XRP, all right? You guys must know I like to diversify. And the main reason for that is not because I don't believe in XRP, but it's because a more diversified portfolio is just a lot safer. And for the video, I could say, yeah, you know, XRP only, yada, yada, because some people would like it. But no, it's not the way it's going to go because you always got to think about what can make me the most amount of money right now and over a long period of time. And, and whenever I think about my strategy, whenever I talk to you guys about it, I'm like, you know what? What I think is going to happen is there are a couple of altcoins right now that are most likely going to prosper. However, I think Bitcoin is going to be the first coin to really run up. And what I mean with that is I think Bitcoin is going to be the first coin to really take these gains and start the bull run. And from that point on forward, when some investors have got their gains, they're going to move it over into altcoins. 
That's my prediction because that's the way it usually happens. And if I'm 100% into XRP and have no Bitcoin, then I would leave all of those gains alone because then I could not sell my Bitcoin for XRP anymore once I've already gotten the gains. And I would be you know, not able to get double gains, which is, in my opinion, a very, very stupid thing. So I'm not against holding more coins. I'm just saying if I had to pick a coin, if I were to just pick one, I would most likely go for XRP because it has the highest utility out of a lot of these coins and the, the I guess just the best use case in general and the, the most perfect future outlook comparison. But as can be seen with the market cap right now, there are a lot of coins that can gain on the short term like Chainlink has done here, which is why I'm always holding more than one coin. The network Ripple has set up is bigger than 99% of all other companies on Earth. XRP is said to be the heart of Ripple. Now, imagining or imagining whatever, giving up on XRP because you think it's a scam would be the biggest scam in the world. I'm a conspiracy theorist to the max and I can't go that far. Well, all I have to say about that is XRP is not a scam. All right. In, in, in a greater scheme of things, Bank of America working with Ripple, a ton of these huge companies working with Ripple, if they thought XRP was a scam, you know, we would not see a lot of this. If XRP were to be deemed a security right now, you know how much trouble that would be for the whole world? Because Ripple has already piece by piece built their framework. They're working with Swift in, in indirect ways. And thus, them coming out to be a scam? Ripple is a scam company? It's possible still, but it will be one of the hugest scams in the world. It would be a very, very big issue, very big controversy. And we would most likely still have to tell our kids about it because it will be one of the biggest scams ever pulled. But you know what? It, it can still happen, though. You know, don't get me wrong. Things like that do happen. Maybe everything was all been a lie. Maybe Ripple has zero partners. <laughs> you know, who knows? But I'm not I'm not of that opinion. No, I think it's not a scam. I don't think it can really be. So I think it's just to calm before the storm right now. Prices might be going down a little bit, but it's just eagerly waiting to just explode, which will eventually do. It's just a little bit of a waiting game. But guys, thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. It's so freaking hot. If it's right hot at your place too, go enjoy it. Go outside, grab a beer or some water, <laughs> do some fun. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Take care, everybody.